This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Ah, finally, after my first vault filled with loot, I can finally turn on all of it to buy myself my very own captain ship. Let's hope nothing bad happens to me on my way back. Oh hey, look, birds. Sea of Thieves is a sandbox game, meaning you're gonna have a different story every time you log in. But that does not mean that you won't experience the same situations as other pirates, especially the tough ones. Some are simply small frustrating situations, and others are game quitting circumstances. And we're gonna go over some of those today, so if you've gone through all these scenarios on this list, then consider yourself a Sea of Thieves veteran. For instance, when you look at this picture, what do you see? Is it A, a rock, B, a tower, C, a smudge on your screen, or D, a full galleon crew that's headed directly for you making your peer pants a little? It's none of the above, actually. If you take a closer look, it's a known phenomenon in Sea of Thieves to look out at the horizon and scan over what seemed like a ship, make a double take, just to find out it was only a rock. As a beginner, you'd always be paranoid of any ship coming your way to steal your treasure, which is why your eyes might play tricks on you. I also used to pray that it was actually a rock instead of a ship, but as I've now grown out of my PvE cocoon to be a PvP butterfly in this game, I now pray that it's actually a ship instead of a rock. And if it isn't, then I'm fighting the rock anyway. If it was actually a ship in the horizon headed your way though, you definitely would have experienced this weird nervousness before going into a battle with other ships. I'm not sure why this is a thing, because when playing other PvP games, I never Ever felt the same fear, but Sea of Thieves is different somehow. Maybe it's because a galleon with four crew members dripped out in arena ship cosmetics and a thousand level hourglass curses are about to crap on little me and I don't want to get embarrassed, but either way I consider a game that kicks in my fight or flight a pretty good game. For those that still experience this, playing with someone else has helped me a lot because I could at least share the responsibilities of my ship. Now these next few grudges I hold have to do with voyaging across the map. I don't know if I can express in words how much I hate this, but I'm going to try to. The northwest direction when sailing is a bitch. If you're trying to go northwest on your boat and you leave your wheel unattended, the boat will steer itself off course because you're going against the waves. Any other direction in this game is completely okay because it won't turn my boat, but the second that I need to leave to go to the bathroom or something, it's when I'm supposed to be going northwest, and now I have to sit there and pee my pants since northwest can't be left alone. Even if I try to turn my wheel to bounce off the turn, it still won't work and will still turn my ship completely around. I hope that northwest gets removed from Sea of Thieves and gets replaced with another east. East gang, where are you at? Now I hate it when a plane shoots me down and, wait, this isn't Sea of Thieves. It's War Thunder, the sponsor of this video. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available now for free on PC and consoles. Did you hear that? I said it's free. I know you have some days where you have nothing to do and constantly scroll through the online store wishing there was a fun game you could play, so give War Thunder a try. It's infinitely better than sitting in front of your screen wasting your time away. Immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder where incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. The game even goes above and beyond other multiplayer games. If your vehicle or an enemy is destroyed, War Thunder will show you exactly what happens. In X-ray view, you'll see precisely where the shell penetrated, which components were affected, and what ultimately led to the destruction of the vehicle. Now if you're still on the fence about the game because of the hard to learn mechanics, don't worry. As soon as you start, War Thunder will give you an in-depth tutorial on how to manage every vehicle so it's super easy to learn. So play War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and use my link in the pinned comment or video description to sign up. For those new players and those who haven't played in 6 months, I'll sweeten the deal for you by giving you a massive bonus pack on PC or consoles that includes multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of a premium account. This is a limited time deal, so don't delay. Now back to the video. Not only is Northwest one of the worst conditions when voyaging from island to island, but paired with this next gripe, I might as well quit the game. The worst moment is when I found out that I had to go west from Thieves Haven to Old Sands Atoll and see that the wind is in the opposite direction of where I'm going. It's the worst feeling ever. I mainly play on a sloop and saw it, which is the fastest ship against the wind, allegedly, so I'm at least happy about that, but it's still slow. If I mainly played on a galleon and had to make the same voyage in those conditions, I'd tell my crew to have fun sailing. Now if you think Northwest is the only frustrating scenario, I bet you've also been through this hair-ripping, table-flipping scenario once you finally get to the island. Imagine you're supposed to dig some treasure up at a big island like Old Faithful or Thieves Haven. You pull up and start heading towards the direction that you think the X is at. It's a pretty big island, but you think you know where you're going. You dig once and no treasure crawls out of the ground. No worries, right? You must have barely missed it. So you keep digging and digging and the more you dig, the more insane you start to feel because you've dug everywhere, yet you haven't struck anything except worms. So you look at the map one more time and you finally, finally realize you were digging at the wrong spot the entire time. I've wasted so much time doing this that I vowed to never dig something up again as my mental state would only go down from there. If you get a voyage that requires you to go to any big island, especially Old Faithful, then just cancel the voyage and re-roll. Don't waste your mental capacity. Now this next one, I don't think people have forgotten about or will ever forget about, but it's necessary in the list. Open Crew. The sea 
Affiliate Thieves feature that has created so many videos, Reddit posts, and horrible experiences just generally making fun of it. I'm sure at some point in every pirate's career, we've delved into open crew expecting to find a forever crew only to find some screaming kids and people that are just bored and sought but still want to play. The only reason I do it is to find those screaming kids to make my video even funnier whenever I mention open crew. And the only thing worse than open crew is not subscribing to my channel. I mean, look at all these cool videos you haven't watched yet. You gotta subscribe. And speaking of players, there are always new ones that just downloaded Sea of Thieves and are wanting to try it out, dig up some treasure, kill some skeletons, and just live the pirate's life. And I always love when new players want to try out the game for the first time, especially when they come to my channel for extra tips and tricks. But sometimes they're in the way of what you're trying to do. They could be trying to fight you or they could just be in your way. So sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta old yeller them. Make them understand that Sea of Thieves isn't all mermaids and treasure. There's hardcore, sweaty PvP in this game too. It's not something I like to do, and I hope they don't hate the game because of me, but it's something of a responsibility. And speaking of doing dirty work that no one likes to do, it's always the worst when your own alliance betrays you after stacking. You both made the bonds, shared experiences, and had laughs, and at the end, they just blow up your ship like none of it meant anything. It's comparable to being broken up with after a long-term relationship, but I have something to admit. I've never experienced this because in actuality, I'm the one that does the breaking up. Hey, hey, I want all the treasure, all right? I understand that alliances get half the earnings of the person turning it in, but I value the reactions of blowing up my alliance more than I value any gold earnings. What can I say? Sue me. Please don't actually sue me. The one thing that I can agree with the community though is the thing that absolutely every pirate has to do in their time playing Sea of Thieves. It's almost like a ritual that has to be done for Sea of Thieves players. And that's sinking when you have a stack of loot on your ship that's vital to you gaining levels for companies. Nothing more I need to say about this as you already have flashbacks. Now if you haven't experienced this next one, consider yourself lucky though I don't think you'll be lucky for long. Everyone has the experience of rage that surges through their body whenever the game bugs out at the worst times for you. It can be right before you sell, during a pivotal moment, during a fight, or even when you're just trying to get into the game. This is also widely known as getting rared, because it's so common that it has its own name attributed to the game company. This stuff is caused by server lag or even rare silly little code. Things like hit reg or randomly teleporting to the bottom of the ocean are among the unfortunate rare incidents. The next one I would also consider a rare incident, but it's more of an intended feature that I actually hate. Sometimes when you're in a PvP battle against another player crew and have the upper hand, the Sea of Thieves gods for some reason look down on you and give you the big ol' thumbs down. And out of nowhere, when you're about to give your finishing barrage of cannons, a skeleton galleon will rise from above the waves with anchor curse balls and start pelting them, ramming into you, shooting you and your crew with cannonballs, and all around just giving the other crew a chance to get back up and out of harm's way, causing you to lose the battle. This has happened to me way too frequently, and I would honestly leave this out of the list if the skeleton crews actually helped me. But they do the opposite way too many times. And lastly, of course, the worst feeling of them all is what still keeps us coming back to the game even though it's the worst worst feeling on this list. After spending hours grinding voyages, world events, or even hourglass streaks, you might run into a more experienced crew than you that can wipe the floor because they're just too good. You try your hardest to fight them, but in the end, all your efforts are in vain, as your boat sinks to the bottom and your hours of grinding are lost. Even though I sometimes do this to other crews, I still feel bad and get kicked in the butt by karma down the road. It's an unfortunate situation, but that's just how the cycle of the game goes. And shout out to War Thunder again for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check out War Thunder now for free on PC and consoles, and remember to use my link in the pinned comment or video description to register. Those of you who are new or haven't played for 6 months will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms including multiple premium vehicles, in-game currency, and more. And also if you liked the video make sure to follow me on my Twitch or I might be streaming Sea of Thieves right now. And if you want to learn the rarest titles that you can still get in Sea of Thieves, then click on this video right here and learn all about it.